Hey, it's Scott here at FastView. It hasn't been widely publicized, but SonicWall's reporting application, SonicWall Analyzer, is officially end of life, and support for it will be discontinued entirely in April 2020. So if you're using SonicWall Analyzer, your upgrade path is a product called SonicWall Analytics. But if you have a search around online at the moment, you'll find the information is a little bit limited. However, there is a free online demo that you can log into to get a feel for what SonicWall Analytics provides. So I've been checking it out, and I thought I'd give you a quick tour and just share some of my thoughts on SonicWall Analytics. So let's get into it. Okay, so to access the live demo, you want to go to livedemo.sonicwall.com, make your way to the management and reporting section, and click on analytics down the bottom here, and then click the view live demo button. Okay, so once you're logged in, you can see a list of your SonicWall devices down the left-hand side. You've got a middle panel here that does change depending on what's selected. And at the top, we've got Home, Reports, Analytics, and Notifications. Now, I've noticed that when you do log in, it takes you to the first Sonic Wall in the list here. One of the main features that it advertised was the aggregation of data across your Sonic Walls. So if you click the global view, you can see the middle panel here shows you the status of your devices, also has a list of all of your devices here, and it provides a dashboard as well as some summary reports such as users, applications, web categories across all of your SonicWall devices. However, I'm not sure if it's just an issue with this online demo, but these views don't appear to be getting populated. It says group level dashboard is not supported for a global view. And if I click users here, for example, it says group level summary is not supported for global view. However, you can click one of these Sonic walls on the left hand side and the information is populated correctly. So now I've got the third Sonic Wall in the list here. Let's take a look at the status. We can also take a look at the dashboard. The dashboard gives us a nice overview of the bandwidth, the threats, what's blocked, the connection rate, total connections, and CPU usage of this particular Sonic Wall. It also provides this neat little world view showing where data is coming from and going to. The live monitor is very reminiscent of the live monitor on the Sonic Wall box itself showing packet rates, bandwidth, connection rates, and also the multi-core monitor down the bottom. The summary view has a range of reports such as applications, users, viruses, and all of the main things you might want to be interested in as a SonicWall administrator. So let's take a look at the users section. This shows the top five users by connections as well as by data transferred. And you can add more things to this page by clicking this little drop down and let's say we want top users by data sent. Now we've got a new option down the bottom, which is showing top users by data sent. Now one thing I would like to see is the ability to drill down into these users to see the websites that they're going to. It took me a little while to work it out, but this button here is the drill down option. And for some reason, as you can see, it says drill down is not currently supported for this. So I'm not sure if this is just the users view because some of these other views, let's go to web categories, does have that option enabled. So let's give it a go now. Here's a list of the web categories, and I want to know more about search engines and portals. So let's click the drill down option, and it pops this little dialog here where you can drill down into all traffic, web activities, threats, or blocked. But you have to choose something here in either the group graphs or session logs section. Let's try all traffic, and maybe under group, let's go to web activities. So when you drill down, it takes you to the analytics section of SonicWall Analytics. And that changes the middle panel here. You'll notice we've got all traffic, web activities, blocked and threats, which were those headings in the drill down dialog I got before. And under each section, we've got groups, graphs and session logs. So at the moment, it's building the list for web activities under the groups section in all traffic, because that's what I selected in the drill down. And it hasn't found any data, interestingly enough, for search engines and portals. Maybe that's because the time range is the last five minutes. So let's just extend that to 24 hours. And you can see when I change that time range, it starts building the data. So at the moment it says 16% flow scanned, grouped to zero entries out of 250,000 of 1.5 million flows. Okay, so it's finished scanning through those flows, but it hasn't found any data either. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's remove the categories filter and see what we get for web activities. So again, it's got to scan through those, those flows. And at least we're getting data this time. So it is building that up, but you notice this view is constantly refreshing. So as it gets further through the scanning, that 
this view is constantly updating. And depending on the time range you've got selected, that may take a little bit of time. Okay, so we do have Google here in the list, so I'm not sure why my filter for search engines and portals wasn't retaining any data. But I've also noticed that this view provides all of the subdomains for every single website, which does clutter the list quite significantly. For example, if we just take a look at this weather bug, we've got one, two, three, four, five entries in the top 20 sites here for weather bug. For Mozilla.net, we have one, two, three, four entries. So if it just said weatherbug.net and aggregated all of the data for weatherbug, and then it just said Mozilla.net and aggregated all the data for Mozilla, you'd have a much cleaner list of websites. But when you include all of these weird and wonderful subdomains, it really clutters up the list of websites quite significantly. One thing that is nice about Sonical Analytics is it provides this sessions view here. So if you want to know more about Google, for example, you can click the sessions column and that will link you to the sessions log view filtered by www.google.com. The other thing that's nice is here's a search result. So www.google.com slash search and you can expand this view. You can see that it was blocked and you can see what access rule blocked it and more information. Unfortunately, we can't see the search term or the rest of the URL that's hidden behind the query string but we can see other information in the log files about any particular flow. You can also select the chart to zoom into a particular section of the logs. Okay, so let's take a look at the graphs view now that we've had a very, very quick tour of the groups view and the session logs. The graphs view contains this network graph style of, of chart, which is interesting, especially when being grouped by websites like this. We have the source IPs, which are these nodes and all of the individual websites being accessed by those source IPs in this sort of exploded arrow fireworks diagram. We can zoom in to view more information. And we can also select the IPs just to get a feel for what those websites are that they're, they're viewing. Let's take a look at the applications. We'll take a look at the graphs view grouped by applications. And again, we're looking at the past five minutes. So let's just uh, expand this to, oh, let's go to six hours. So that's 500,000 flows. Okay, so again, this does get a little bit messy. If you just wanna see what applications a source IP went to, uh, you do need to do a little bit of zooming in and selecting and scanning with your eye around the whole chart to get a feel for what applications were accessed. If you want that flat list of applications, then that's when you would go to the groups view and take a look at the applications groups. Okay, cool. So going back to my use case of finding who went to a particular website, from what I can tell, the best way to do that is to go to web activities and then select the website that you want to view. Unfortunately, you can't filter or drill down on multiple websites, it's only one. So if you want to get a feel for everyone that accessed Weatherbug, there's actually no way to do that because we can't select multiple websites. And because of all of the subdomains, we need to select multiple websites to filter on weatherbug.net. So maybe let's just choose this Google example again. We can filter a view by clicking that filter button. And each time you update the filter, it has to scan through the number of flows that you've got selected. Or you can also drill down into the website like I did before. And before I went into the session logs, but I guess the best way to view the people that went to a website is to go to sources. Okay, so now I'm looking at my sources filtered by www.google.com. I can group by IP addresses, I can group by interfaces, and I can group by countries, but it doesn't look like I can group by username. So I'm not sure how to actually get the view of users in the analytics view here. There doesn't seem to be an option for it in any of the groups or any of the group buys in either groups, graphs, or session logs. If I just go back to web activities, you can filter the view by users. So in fact, you can filter by a lot of things in your Sonic Wall logs, which is nice. So let's go ahead and select users, but you do need to know the username if you're gonna filter this way. Otherwise, you might be able to use that little magnifying glass coming from the reports view that I was showing you earlier where you've got that list of users. So let's just try and remember one of those users. Um, M. Schultz, I think that's how you spell it. And then you have to click this button here to apply the filter. Great, so we've got the list of websites that M. Schultz accessed. But again, we've got a very, very messy list of websites with all of the subdomains, Skype features in here on almost every row. It's not a great view for actually trying to find out what websites this person was going to on the internet. 
So if you do need to share reports with department managers, HR, teachers, principals, anyone else in the organization that's interested in the web usage activity of people, this probably isn't going to be the application you're going to use for that. The application you should be using for that is FastView Reporter for SonicWall. We've designed FastView Reporter from the ground up to produce meaningful internet usage reports that non-technical people can understand. For example, I've just run an internet usage report on this user and I'm taking a look at their websites by size and it makes sense to me. I know what Spotify is, I know what Trello and Google is and so on. To contrast that, if I click the clean off section, you can see all of the sites that were really logged by SonicWall. So even when you take off all the subdomains that you're seeing in SonicWall Analytics, it's still not a meaningful list of websites for HR and department managers. No one goes to Edge Suite or Trello Backgrounds or any of these other websites, but with our unique site clean technology, we're able to roll those into the actual websites that were visited. Our reports also come with a safeguarding section to help schools and other organizations monitor children and, and people at risk of self-harm and antisocial online behavior. We have a search term section to show you the suspicious search terms YouTube videos, and allowed unacceptable sites and blocked unacceptable sites. You also don't need to run reports with our real-time alerting feature. If someone does conduct a suspicious online search, we can send an alert to the right person with all the details they need. If you would like to try this out, just head to fastview.co slash sonicwall and download our completely free 30-day trial. Just send your syslog data from your sonic wall to the FastView server and you'll have live dashboards, reports and alerts ready to be sent to the right person in your organization. I really hope this video was useful and thank you very much for watching.